Hey, 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 what's going on all you beautiful people? My name is Antoinette Staples and I'm so excited that you've decided to check out my YouTube channel this week. I know you could be doing anything else with your time, but you are watching this video from me. So it is my hope and my prayer that this is a blessing to you. If it is, like I say every week, make sure you let me know, write a comment below. I love to hear from you. Your comments bless my heart and I try to respond to each of you. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you. If you are returning, welcome back. Whether you're new or returning, make sure you hit the subscribe button before you leave. I wanna thank you to all my subscribers and all my faithful watchers and followers here on YouTube. You all are such a blessing to my life and so I just wanna say thank you. I also wanna say if you have social media and you are on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I post more frequently on my Instagram page and I also give more updates on what's going on with me, things that I'm speaking at, things that I'm doing if you're located here in Houston um, and I encourage more on that page on a daily basis. So you can follow me on Instagram at Antoinette underscore Staples. So y'all make sure y'all go follow me on Instagram. I also wanna say if you're here in Houston, this upcoming Saturday, February the 24th, we're having our second Ignite meeting for 2018. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you there. We have a few seats left, so um, I'm looking forward to the ladies who have already emailed me. But if you are interested in attending Ignite this Saturday, we have a few seats left, so you make sure you send me an email. It's absolutely free, but seating is limited, so you have to email me in order to attend. I can only host a few ladies, so you need to go to my website, click on Join the Sisterhood. I'm gonna put it up here. So put Join the Sisterhood, and it'll send you directly to my link, all right? Uh, directly to my email. And then from there, you can say, I want to attend Ignite, I'm ready to Ignite, let's Ignite, whatever you wanna do. And if I still have seats left, I'll respond and give you the information. So I am gonna hop into this video. Thank y'all for bearing with me through all of that. But I'm gonna hop into this video and let me say to you all, I am gonna do my best not to be before you too long, but this one is coming straight from my heart to yours. So this is all truth, this is all me, and this one hit home for me this week. Um, it's um, just conversations through I had with good girlfriends of mine. So the title of this week's video is, It's a Distraction. It's a distraction, okay? So I don't know who that is for, but if you're watching the video, I pray that this one is for you. And so this week's video is titled, It's a Distraction. And so I really wanted to speak about this for just anybody watching my channel and you feel like something has been disrupted in your life and you're really trying to pinpoint, how did this happen? How did I get here? What happened? It's a distraction, all right? And the enemy is sending them our way each and every way that he can. And I like to, you know, just this week I was saying, Lord, it's a test and I will pass this test, all right? But there are so many different things that happen in our life, so many different things that come our way, and I just wanna say, it's a distraction. It's trying to throw you off your course, it's trying to put you off your game, and when you are called by the Lord and you have something to do, there's an assignment, there's a purpose, there's a goal, whatever it is, the enemy would love nothing more than to prevent you from having that, prevent you from reaching that, and it's a distraction. So sometimes you see on Instagram, if you're on Instagram and social media, when they see a very attractive man, they say it's a snack. Well, I'm gonna say it's a distraction. Even that's a distraction. So we have to be mindful. What is it that's coming in my life that's knocking me off full, off course? What is it that has my, my, my attention right now? What is it that has my focus right now? So when you look at the word distraction, it says a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. And when God has something for you, when God wants you to be doing something in your life, a distraction is trying to keep you from giving him your undivided attention. Why? Because when you're distracted, you can't hear, you can't see, and you can't focus. You cannot do what God wants you to do. So it is a distraction. Anything keeping you from doing the will of the Father Father is a distraction. So here are some other words. It's a diversion. It's an interruption. 
it's a disturbance it's interference it's a hindrance when something comes in your life and it does any of those things it interrupts it disturbs it hinders it interferes it is a distraction when you've heard very clearly from the Lord of what it is that he wants you to do in life you need to start like mm, uh, I don't want it it's a distraction no matter how good it looks no matter how good it sounds no matter how good it smells all right none of that matters it's a distraction and it's trying to keep you from the big picture the ultimate goal all right I saw some quotes that said starve your distractions and feed your focus feed your focus feed your attention on the Lord feed your time with the Lord feed your meditation and your prayer life feed your your spending time with God just fellowship with God feed those things so you can kind of starve those distractions and so I thought about that and I said well you know some people may say Oh, well, you know, I, no, I'm not really distracted right now, but you have been. I bet you, you can think of a time when you have been distracted or it's either a distraction on the way. It might be a distraction in the way of you dating. It might be a distraction on your job. It might be a distraction within your home, keeping you from being the wife or the mother that you need to be. There are distractions around all of us. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. All right. And so I thought about when you're driving, right? You know, when you're distracted in a car you fumbling around the car and you're looking for all different kinds of things what happens when you're distracted you miss your exit right so if you're distracted and you're driving in the car you very well might miss your exit okay it'll cause you to get off your course you miss your exit you see those people like swerving trying to hurry up and get off you're like what's happening it could cause an accident or how about the person that constantly texts or they're on their phone and you've been into a fender bender because you were distracted so distractions happen to all of us all right and so I thought about that and I said sometimes if we're not careful distractions will cause us to settle all right and so I thought about the time when I went fishing and I was actually talking to my twin sister earlier today and so she said when you know what it is that you're going for anything else that you catch you'll toss it back up into the water because you know it's not what you intended to go and get right it's not what you were fishing for all right and so sometimes when you're not clear number one about your focus all right when you're not necessarily clear about your purpose it's easy for you to get distracted so I remember at times when I went fishing and I was just so ecstatic I had been out there for a while and I was so ecstatic that I had caught something it didn't matter what it was I was just happy that I caught something because I was like I'm out here fishing for something and so I caught it and so I'm just happy that I caught a fish all right but my friends who were with me they had something specific that they were fishing for and so they were like oh okay yeah yeah that's good but you're gonna have to toss that back in the water because that's not we're fishing for you can't keep that fish and so I was like why I, I caught this why can't I keep this this is not mine that's not what we're fishing for today so great for you great great catch you can take a picture or what have you but you gotta toss that back into the water because we came here for something else and so I don't know if anybody ever watched the show deadliest catch but these go these guys go into these deadly climates and these these water conditions and everything is crazy all around them it is really it is really dangerous condition dangerous conditions that they're in all right and it could be life-threatening for them but they're out there because they're going to catch these king crabs they're not going out there looking for no they're, they're not going out there looking for any other kind of fish it might be nice if they caught a shark but they're not looking for sharks it, it might be nice if they saw a whale but they're not looking for a whale that could be an easy distraction what is it that they're out there for they're out there for the king crabs and so they're going and they're simply focused on just that but when you are not clear about what your purpose is or what your direction is or what it is that you're trying to do you can easily get distracted and so you can get distracted and you'll take anything you're afraid to toss back those things that you've caught because you're you're not really you're not really in tune to what it is that you're out there for to begin with anybody distracted anybody distracted in this season of life all right and so when we look at scripture and I want to share with you two scriptures today in Psalms in Psalm 119 in verse 47 it says I rise before the dawning I rise before the dawning of the morning and I cry for help I hope in your word my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word and so I'm going to repeat that again and it says I rise before the dawning of the morning and I cry for your help I hope in your word my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word why am I sharing this I'm sharing this because 
it's important in order for you to wake right at the dawning right your eyes are awake at the night watches do you know how people say stay woke i'm saying in order for you not to be distracted you've got to stay woke because you might be out there fishing and yeah you caught something but let me tell you it might be the right time it might be the wrong type of fish all right you caught the dangerous fish you caught that fish that's gonna make you sick you talk you caught that fish that might be illegal you caught that fish that's gonna be hazardous to your health so you need to know when you catch those things because it's not what you went out there for you need to know how to toss it back all right and so i'm saying to you that if you wake and you're looking for the lord and you're seeking his will for your life and your eyes are open in the night watches because right wait, wait, what's the song say it says the freaks come out at night right there's some things that are happening in your dark places in life where just any old thing is going to try to come and knock you off course all right but you have to keep your eyes awake you have to be mindful of what is it that the Lord wants me to do. Lord, I need to hear your voice. Lord, I need to see your ways. I need to feel your presence. I need to know your will for my life so I don't get distracted because it's a distraction. Anything that comes to try to prevent you from doing the will of the Father is a distraction. Anybody ever have somebody enter into their life and it look good and they feel real good at the time and you're thinking about, man, I really want this for my life, but then you start to think about it. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. See, what's happening here is I'm spending less time with God and we ain't having no real godly talk. We talking about a whole lot of worldly things and you got my focus off. As a matter of fact, you've got my conviction off, all right? You got my mind in places that I know that it should not be, okay? And so this person is what? They're distraction for you oh yeah they look real good on paper but we're not looking for what's good on paper see God knows the heart of man and so we toss the paper to the side all right we're like Lord I want the people in my life that you have for me because anybody else is a distraction Lord I want the opportunities that you have for me because anything else is a distraction Lord I want the favor in that you have for me because anything else is a distraction Lord I want what you say love looks like not what it just looks like on social media because anything else is a distraction it'll get me caught up get me wrapped up and before I know it I'm on a destructive path and I don't even know how I got there or how to get out of it so lastly I want to share the scripture in first Kings and we're in first Kings and I'm gonna read 13 and 15 now and it says this and it says then he said to him come home with me and eat bread and he said, I cannot return with you, nor go in, in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return going the way that you came. He said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back to your house that he may eat and drink water. He was lying though. And it says, so he went back with him and he ate bread in his house and he drank water. And now it happened as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah saying, thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord gave you, what the Lord your God commanded you, but you have come back, ate bread and drank water in this place of which the Lord said to you, eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall now come to the tomb of, shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And I thank y'all for bearing with me on this scripture. But here it is, this man of God who said, I know the word of the Lord. And he, t I know the word of the Lord came to me and it said, you shall not eat there. You shall not drink there and you shall not go with this man. But here goes this man. And he says, but I too am a prophet. And the Lord said to me that this is what you should do. You should come back with me. You should eat and you should drink. But he was lying. And the men know what the Lord had told him but yet and still he did it anyway now if we go back to verse 8 here it is he healed the king's hand the king's hand had withered but here we go in verse 8 the, the man of God says it says but the man of God said to the king if you were to give me half your house I would not go in with you nor would I eat uh, bread or drink water in this place for so it was commanded to me by the word of the Lord saying you shall not eat bread nor drink water nor return to the same place you came so he went another way and did not go by the way that he came to Bethel so here it is this is the second time so he first said no to the king then he said no to the old prophet what sometimes I'm gonna tell you that the enemy will come at you the same way with the 
same words and it looks a little bit more appealing, right? So he said the first time he was strong in his stance and he was like, no, I ain't doing that. You could give me half of what you have. And even if you give me half of it, I'm still not going to go back. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to go the place that I came because that's what the word of the Lord said to me. And I'm going to be obedient. So yeah, even half of what you have, what looks real good, it looks real promising, but what? It's a distraction. And so I know that I can't do that because that's what the word of the Lord said to me. So I go on my way. I'm real strong at this point in life. Y'all, anybody been there? You were started out real strong, but how many of you know, sometimes you might get a little weary, right? And so you might get a little worn down because see, he's still traveling and nowhere do we see where he ate or he drank or he did any of that. So maybe he was a little hungry. Maybe he was a little, a, a little famish at this point. Okay. And so he goes on and he's walking and everything. And here comes this old prophet and the old prophet says, the Lord told me the angel came, the angel came and told me that you can eat and you can drink with me and you can go back with me. And that's all he had to hear was to say, the Lord told you. And so I don't know how many people been distracted because the word of God came to you in a way and the sermon came in your spirit. And the Lord said, don't do that. Don't sit with them. Don't sleep with them. Don't go home with them. Don't connect with them. Don't go out with them. And you were real strong in your stance in the beginning, but they came back again and they came back even stronger. And it looked even more appealing at this time because they caught you in a weak space. And so this time around, they said, I believe in my heart. I believe in my spirit. The Lord spoke to me. And because they said it this way, this time you said, okay, all right. Well, it feels good. It feels all right this time because I'm in need. It feels good this time because it looks a little good. It looks better than it did the last time. It feels a little bit better than it did the last time. But something in your spirit said, don't do it. It's a distraction, but you went anyway. And what happened here? He said that because you disobeyed the word of the Lord, your body, your corpse shall not return. Your, your, your tomb, it shall not come back to the tomb of your fathers. Your corpse shall not go back to the tomb of your fathers. What am I saying to you? I'm saying if you are not careful, this distraction, this thing that the Lord has clearly told you, get away, run the enemy. The word of God says, re resist the, the devil and he shall flee, right? Flee from sin, run from it, all right? The Lord didn't just say walk away from that thing. He said run, all right? When you know something is bad for you, it's a distraction. The Lord says you better run from it. Why? Because it'll wear you down if you're not careful. It'll look even good and the more you're around something, the more it becomes more acceptable the more it becomes more appetizing to you, right? And so I just want to say to anybody in this space, you might be getting, something might be presented to you and it's a distraction. If the Lord said, no, run sister, run brother, run from that thing, whatever it is, because it is a distraction and the outcome of you disobeying the word of God could be devastating. So I don't know who that word is for. You stay on the course, stay focused, do what it is that the Lord has called you to do. Ask the Lord to reveal to you as we read in the morning and in the evening, keep your, keep your eyes open. There's something that the Lord wanna speak to you, but you've gotta be woke, you've gotta be alert, you've gotta be aware, you've gotta ask your Lord, the Lord to keep your spirit in tune so that you're not easily distracted. Y'all listen, it's a distraction and the enemy he gonna toss him every way that he can. He might come and he might come six feet tall. He might come. She, would, would you like me? And I don't know what you like. She might come in your height and the shape and everything that you want. She's a distraction. He's a distraction. It might come in an opportunity and it's out offering you the kind of money that you want at the time. But the Lord told you to take a different assignment. It's a distraction. All right. It might come in a way of you having a troubled marriage right now and somebody else is a listening ear. It's a distraction. And so I just want you to know wherever it is when the Lord said no obey his command. Do what it is that the Lord called you to do in this season of life. So I want to pray for those of you who are dealing with some distractions right now. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you're good, you're loving, you're kind. There's none like you in all the earth. God, we love you now and we pray for your strength, not our strength, but your strength in us. We pray that you would help us to obey your command, to obey your will for our life, not to be so tempted by sin, not to be so tempted by things that look appealing or attractive, oh God, but give us the strength and the courage to say no and to walk away. And when it's time to flee, run if we need to. Father, I pray for my brothers and my sisters who are out here trying to do your will. Lord God, we pray that you would strengthen us, that you would give us the courage that we need, that you would help us to endure.
endure, that we would not grow weary in well-doing. We thank you that we shall reap the reward. We shall reap the promise if we faint not. And so we pray that we would trust in your word and trust in your promise. It is in your darling son Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Y'all, I want to thank you so much for watching. I truly hope and I pray that it was a blessing to you. Remember, if the Lord said no, no matter how good it looks, no matter how good it smells, all right, no matter what time of day it came, no matter how soft it is, okay, no matter what, okay, if the Lord said no, it is a distraction. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit, the thing that convicts you and the Lord tells you no. Don't ignore it. It is a distraction trying to knock you off course. And if you are disobedient, the outcome could be devastating. You could be trying yourself, trying to pick up the broken pieces of your life. And yes, God will put you back together again, but he wants to protect you. Lord, sometimes he put up a stop sign and he says, don't do that. Don't do that. He doesn't want to prevent you from having a good time. The Lord doesn't want to prevent you from having a wonderful life. He wants to prevent you from heartache. He wants to pre pre prevent you from devastation and shame. He wants to he wants to protect you from those things. He wants to keep those things from happening in your life, but you've got to be obedient. Recognize when it is a distraction. All right. So I pray this blessed you. If it did, make sure you let me know, write a comment below. All right. It is time that we all put on our wings and soar.